Hi friends, welcome back. This is Caitlin from Caitlin Annalie Cards here for here with you <laughs> for Pink and Main. I am so excited because today we are starting, well, technically yesterday started sneak peek week for April. So that means that this Friday there is a new release from Pink and Main coming. I'm so excited to see everybody in the chat. Virginia, Heather, Yvonne, Terry. It's so nice to see you all here, Janet. Um, I am just so grateful that you came to hang out and I am so excited to show you some goodies. So I pulled a new stamp set, a new stencil and a new die set to play with tonight. And we're gonna make a really cute springy card, something that's kind of a little more all purpose, something you could send year round, honestly. But once you see these images, you're gonna understand why I'm excited. So let's get switched over. Turn on my bright light. There we go. All right. So I have prepped all of my stuff as usual. And I we are going to be doing some ink blending with the stencils that I have. But I am so excited to show you guys this newness. So let me make sure we're not going to get blinded with reflections. So here's the first thing we're going to take a look at. This is the mush love, like mushroom, mush love stamp set and that is from mommy lay designs um who does lives on i think wednesday nights for pink and me too she's a great this is all her own drawings and calligraphy her calligraphy is beautiful and i knew that going into this but these images are so stinking cute so this little girl in her little mushy hat, I have the stamp isn't perfectly lined up, but it's the image we're gonna use on our card. So you'll get to see um, it even better. And this cute, chunky little mushroom guy, these individual mushrooms. We have a sleepy mushroom, some extra little grass and bushes, rocks and stars. Then we have sending smiles, hello and hi. I, I have much love for you. Thank you so much. And then the best part is all of the sentiments have coordinating dies as well, even the little guys. So these are not from the April box or the subs subscription. This is the new release that is coming out this Friday. Hmm, I'm so excited. Okay, so that's our first thing to look at. The second is this die set. This is the layered scallop circle dies. I should put it that way, huh? So you get two of these bumpy guys, you get two stitched circles, and then you get the inside, one says love you and one says miss you. So if you put these inside the circle, it'll cut out the letters from in the circle. So this is kind of the guide that we are given to, to see how those are. And if it was not for this guide, I have to be really honest with you, <laughs> I would not have realized how to use these circles. I have another die set that has the scallops like that. And I don't know why it never occurred to me that they weren't just, I thought they were like ticket stubs. The other set that I have, I didn't think to cut two and layer them. So let me show you <laughs> what they look like. So I cut a moss green and a barbershop blue. And when you do them like that, you're like, wow, that doesn't, they look weird. All you have to do is layer them and twist them like that. So then you get the circle the whole way around. And I cut one of the um, solid stitched circles and it fits perfectly over the center. And so now we get the scalloped edges the whole way around. I got there eventually, guys. Uh, so what we're gonna do is create a little background scene for our little mushy girl. She's gonna sit right on here in the circle, but she can't just be there playing. She needs a background. So to make our background, I grabbed this stencil. This is the Cloudy Day stencil. And how perfect is this? So you get individual clouds, and then you get cloud border all the way around. So that way you can manipulate it and spin it and flip it and do whatever you want to do to have endless clouds. 
So we're gonna create a little ink blended cloudy background for our little girl on our scalloped circle. Yes, Virginia, I did. I felt, literally felt brain dead when that happened. Um, yeah, so those are our three new sneak peeks that we're gonna play with tonight. I will show them again as we're going through, but we are gonna get started with our card base first. So I grabbed a piece of, um, ooh, it's teal with white polka dots, little micro dots. This is from the World to Me paper pad, paper pack, sorry, six by six paper pack. We are going to, do we give it a border? No, I think we have enough going on. Let's leave it solid. So I'm gonna cut one side to four and a quarter and one side to five and a half. Right, Terry? There you go. It's not my fault. I just didn't watch anybody else use them. Let me be the one to make the mistakes and share with you guys how it goes, right? So I'm gonna just add some of the Easy Squeeze Liquid Glue to the back of my polka dot paper. This is starting to get a little low. I'm gonna have to put in a ink and main order soon. All right, so I'm adhering that to a top folding A2 card base. Okay. And you know what? I want to stamp something on the inside. Um, and I want to do that before we add foam and stuff to the top. Oh, they're not chickens. They're globes. What did I just do with my scrap? Oh my gosh, guys, it's, mm. there you go. They're globes with flowers. And they're kind of different. I definitely like the option of having the other side too, but I'm sure somebody out there needs globes with flowers. So that's what's on the back of that. I'm gonna get out my Misty. And I want to stamp the, I have much love for you. On the inside of my card and the sentiment I'm going to be using on the front I stamped in barbershop and I thought I was going to use it on my blog card for tomorrow but I'm not so I luckily I saved it and it is the perfect thing for this card so we're going to do the same thing I'm going to stamp it in the barbershop so it all goes together So the barbershop is that beautiful navy blue. I have so much love for you. I love a good honey sentiment. Apparently so does Mommy Ray, which really works for me. You know what? I can't even stop there. We're going to add one last little thing. We'll put a couple of these little mushies down at the bottom, too. Same thing in blue. You know what? It moved. So one is good enough for tonight. I'm not risking my luck with that one. It's my own fault for not having my paper lined up better. There you go. So cute little mushrooms. I have mush love for you. Okay. Next, let's set up our card. So this is that hello that I was saying I had left over. I um, I made a card with the cute little chunky mushroom guy um, for my blog post tomorrow. 
And so I used the hello and I stamped it in the barber shop, but it didn't go with everything else. So I ended up stamping it again in just the asphalt black ink, but I saved this one. And so once I realized I wanted to do blue, green, and blue, green, and teal for this, it seemed like a no brainer. So we're going to add liquid glue to our green layer. Get our blue layer situated. I think I'm going to adhere these flat and then pop up the white layer with foam and then put the little girl on flat on her scene. So I want this not perfectly in the center. I want it up a little bit. And that way I have room for my hello underneath. Just trying to make sure I'm close to equidistant from those edges. I feel good about that. And then we'll just add some glue to our hello. There we go. That all lined up. And before we can add the white circle, we need to ink it up. So I'm going to grab a cloudy day stencil. Yep, so this these are three sneak peeks from the April release that is out this Friday. If you want to see more about the kits, you should check out um, Cards by Kendra. She has been making videos and posts for the card kits, the monthly kits specifically. And so um, she's got all the good details for those over on her page. I need to post it and you know what? I ran out of my big post-its. All these lives have me going through my supplies faster than I'm used to. All right, so I'm just using these full stick post-it notes to mask off the individual clouds because I don't want to play with those today. And I'm going to go in with the uh, lakeside ink, which is going to end up being pretty close to the same teal as our pattern paper. Um, because I want a super, super light um, application for this, I am going to go in with a domed blending brush. I'm going to tap off the extra because I do want these to look like really soft, happy clouds, not angry storm clouds. Um, we can definitely do a little more color at the top because that makes sense that that would kind of be open sky. And then that's the other nice thing about using those kind of post-its is they also adhere themselves to your paper and you have to worry about everything sliding around as much. So I just shifted my stencil over a little bit. I'm blending from the stencil up onto my paper and that's gonna help me really control the amount of ink that's going down on the paper. We're gonna come over on the side and I'm going to end up doing this whole thing with just still only using this one side but because this is so long let alone this super long edge we're going to get a lot of variation in those clouds okay you've got that little sliver but that's okay because that's going to go under the little girl and I'm just taking a little bit of ink from the edges onto the side just to make sure that if any of these sides poke out from underneath her that they are incorporated and I like to just add the whatever's left on my brush to the edges just to kind of frame in our stamping. 
So that is our sweet little cloudy sky. So easy, so fast with the new cloudy day stencil. So this one I want to top up with foam. I have my giant foam roll. We should name the foam roll. That's what we have it done. If anybody feels like they know what the foam rolls name should be, let me know. I'm very much open to suggestions. I'm just cutting off enough bits to top this guy up. My nails turned out a little thicker this week, so I'm going to use my pick tool, which is actually from the Dollar Tree. get this centered. If you're ever concerned about adhering your foam taped item in the right position, you can always add a little bit of liquid glue to the back of your foam tape and it'll give you that little bit of slip and slide kind of wiggle room. But I think I'm gonna, as long as you don't push down, it's pretty easy to pick up and adjust your item. It's just once you push down, then you're kind of committed. So we have committed. So there is our whole little base. Super cute. I don't know she's still sitting inside. That's good. Have it back for you. And we are going to get to coloring. So I did stamp and already die cut out my little image. I just have it taped into place so that it's easier for me to color. Let's get you guys a little closer in. Perfect. All right. And I did already grab my Copic colors for this. So it should be pretty easy one. So I'm going to start with her skin tone. And today I decided that I want her to be a little more on the tan side. So I'm going to go in with the E15 as my darkest shade. I'm going to fill in the shadow part of her ear. We're going to go under her hair. Along the outside of her face. I like to do right above her little button nose. I'm going to also do a little bit on her uh, right above her lash line. On the side of her neck and then the inside of her arms. This is pretty uh, like a small space, pretty detailed in there. So just making sure I'm using the very tip of my marker. We're going to go under her scallop dress. And then on the inside of the legs. And I like to add a little knee line just to give a little bit more definition to the leg. And then right up against her shoes. So my medium shade is going to be an E13. And I'm just going to start pulling out the, that darker color. I'm going to create her nose line by kind of connecting over the eyes in a little, almost like a Mickey Mouse kind of shape. We're going to fill in her arms completely. And then emphasize the shading on her legs. And then my lightest skin tone color is going to be the E11. I 
and I'm going to fill that in. And that blended out a little too well. So I'm going to go back in with my E15 while everything is still wet. And I'm going to emphasize those shadows one more time. Being a little bit more reserved because I'm not going to go back in and blend again. I'm just going to leave the the colors the way they are. I forgot to fill in her nose. There we go. And I want to add some blush to her cheeks. So I'm going to go in with my R21 and just pull some color from the outside of her face across the cheek. And I can go back in with the 11 and just make sure that's nicely feathered out. So that is our skin tone done. You can see we still do have a, a nice little highlight around the eyes, under the nose, and on her legs. So it's definitely enough to give um, that contrast and kind of the dimension that I'm looking for without it being super overwhelming because this does feel like such a like delicate and cute image. So that is her. Um, then let's do the green next. I grabbed some very bright greens. I'm trying to match my moss paper the best that I can. And so we're gonna go in with the one. We're gonna go in with the fluorescent green first. And just start shading in the base of my leaves, the base of these little flowers. the bottom of her little grassy background. And I'm gonna go behind all of these little clumps that are drawn into this, because in theory, they would be casting a shadow behind them. And then just kind of flicking some color up from the bottom. My next shade is a YG07 which is just a hint lighter. I'm not even gonna go in really on the leaves because I wanna make sure that I have enough room for my highlight shade there. For this, I want to leave the clumps that were uh, the artist drawn lines out and just start shading and filling in the rest of the space with that medium green. And then my lightest shade is gonna be a YG01, which is gonna be a really bright pop. Much more yellow in this one. And I just love how that's gonna really look like all of these things are catching some sunlight, which I think is just perfect for this style image. There we go. Um, that looks so fluorescent on camera. Um, it, it's bright, but it's not quite that glowing in person. <laughs> yeah, the cloud stencil is really fun because you get the extra shapes, right? And then you get all the different edges too. So you have so many options with a stencil like that. And it would do any size card, right? Slimline, mini slimline, A2, A7, five by seven, whatever. So I'm gonna jump to her hair. I probably should have done that before the grass, but it really doesn't matter. So I'm going in with my E59 and I'm gonna just start creating that hair texture, just making little lines coming from under her mushroom cap down towards 
the edge of her hair. And then I like to go back in from kind of where her hair is tucked under and add a little bit of extra kind of shadow pulling out. And then under her hat, we're gonna add a line of shadow because that's where the hat would be kind of rolling under. And then the same thing for the bottom, just creating little lines following kind of the curve of her hairline and going back in and adding in some extra depth and shadow right around her head. Then I'll go in with the E57 and thicken those up. I want to be careful not to fill in all of the space between because I want to leave room for my highlight shade. And I am going to carry that same technique across the bottom, but towards her neck, I have no problem filling that in because we really wouldn't get a lot of light down there. My highlight shade is the E55. So we're just gonna fill in the rest of her hair with that. And I did have one little spot where I went outside the lines. So I will fix that with a gel pen. And while I have it out, I'm gonna re-emphasize the highlights in her eyes. There she is. So nice bright eyes, pretty brown hair. Um, what should we do next? Let's do her dress. So her dress, I wanted to do teal like the background. And then we'll do blue for the mushroom cap and the flowers. So my darkest teal color I'm going in with is a BG09. I'm gonna put a little shadow up on her shoulders. I'm gonna pull that color down the sides of her dress and down under her arms. I'm gonna leave a little bit of white space just to emphasize kind of that curved reflection we would get from the light hitting it. And I wanna make this kind of look like it's a bell dress. So because there would be shadow going from where it's over, I'm just kind of rounding out the top shadow line. And then on the bottom, I'm gonna continue where those scallops are of her skirt and pull those up. And that's gonna give that really pretty kind of ruffled look. And we'll just go ahead and give her some matching shoes, I think. My next shade is my BG57. I'm gonna fill in the top part completely. And then the same thing, I'm just gonna pull, pull that color down and around, using it to fill in and blend out those scallops too. And you know what, it's okay if they actually come up and meet that top line. We'll go ahead and fill in her shoes. And then my lightest shade is a BG23. I just wanna fill in the highlights of the skirt. Go. Um, let's give her a green bow. We'll just do one color. We'll just do the YG07. There we go. <clears throat> Sorry. This one's That's okay. 
And then the last color blend we're gonna do is a true blue. So I'm starting out with a B39. We'll do the flowers first. So I want the back part of those petals to be shadowed. And I want the front bottom to have a good shadow. I'm gonna start blending this down. Hold on. There we go. That drink didn't get it for me. Okay. So I'm emphasizing a little bit on those lines pulling down, but the bulk of that shadow is gonna be on that kind of cupped part. Then we're going in with the B37. We'll blend out the back area because I do want that darker. We'll start blending out some of those stripes. And then my lightest shade is a B34. And I'm going to fill in the little center section. My instinct is to fill that in with like a yellow or something, but I really don't want to bring in an additional color. So the lightest shade is fine. So there are our little flowers and dress on our update. And all we have left is her little mushroom hat. Hey, Pam. Hey, Lisa. Okay, so for the mushroom hat, we can see we already have some artist drawn lines telling us where the shadow is. So I'm gonna start by emphasizing that edge. And I'm also gonna pick a side. And for me, my go to is to just pick the left. So I'm gonna start up towards the center. And I'm going to bring a shadow line down, being careful not to get in the spots and to leave a good little sliver of white on the outer edge, again, to give that really nice reflective light. And I'm going to pull around and just start kind of filling that in. So we're almost making a C shape. Then I'm going to bring in my medium shade. And we want to overlap that just enough that we get that kind of the, the 37 is a little bit of a brighter blue. Like almost has a little bit of a turquoise feel to it. We want to bring that out in there. And then we jump right back into the powders with the kind of the 34, but that's okay. So I'm gonna fill in that outer edge and connect everything in the middle. And the 34 to the 37 is kind of a jump, but if you kind of use the marker in the white space and push it into that 37, you do get a really beautiful blend. I'm gonna fill in these edges. And then for the under part of the cap, I want it to be darker to really emphasize that like lip that we created on the edge of the mushroom. So we're gonna go 39 right against her head and on the ribs of the mushroom. I'm sure those have a technical name. So if you know it, you let me know. And then fill in with thirty-seven, and I'm gonna go in with that lightest blue. You know what? I did a good job not coloring those polka dots in. Let's just leave them white. If I had gotten ink in there, I would um, just go ahead and color them up, but they're pretty clear, so. Um, I did go in with just a white gel pen to make sure that it's nice and clear. But the other thing I wanna do is this area that I created my shadow on, I'm also gonna put a highlight with my gel pen. 
So I'm going to take an eight for that. And I'm just going to create kind of slightly curved line and just add a little dot to either end as a little catch light. You know what, who else? Our little flowers could use some eye highlights. Well, the one who has his eyes open anyway. The other one's snoozing. There you go. So that just helps their expressions to pop a little bit. And I love the little bit of shine that this gives to, um, to the mushroom cap. Like she, she just popped it right off a little mushroom and added it for her outfit. So now with the magic of lives, she has die cut. Oh, Lisa, I love that. I definitely started out with um, doing critters first and then got to florals and then slowly started getting into coloring uh, more like human people images. Um, but it's definitely different. Each one of those things is very different. So kudos to you for learning something new. Um, so I'm going to take liquid glue and adhere her down. Thank you, Susan. Coloring is my absolute favorite part of card making by far. It is the reason that I got hooked on making cards instead of just watching other people make them. So this has a little bit of a curved edge, but it's not curved enough to sit up into the circle. If I had thought about that part before, I could have colored in the bottom green, but I really don't mind this hanging off a little bit. So I'm going to get my, the, where the, in between her feet is, it pops up just a hint. So I want that to be as close to kind of centered as I can get it. And then we will place her down onto that circle. So it almost gives like a snow globe kind of look. But we can still see all of those scallops. So cute. And then, you know what else just came out? Every month we get a new um, enamel dots and these beautiful glitter enamel dots just came out. These are the cloudy day glitter enamel dots. And so I was thinking this teal matches really nicely. And I think I just wanna do three littles today. I think I don't wanna add any of the big guys. So, Let's just add a couple little pops of shine and glitter to our card. I'm gonna keep them all. Yeah, no, we need one up high, right? We need one up high. All right. So I like to kind of try to make a triangle where they're not too stacked and too close together. But I think that that is super stinking cute. So there is our card, our little cloudy background, our scalloped circle dies. I have much love for you with our little sneaky mushrooms and our little hello. So this could be, you wouldn't have, you don't have to do the I have much love for you, right? You could put anything in the middle. You could just do the little mushrooms and fill this all in with your own personal message. And then this could be a card for literally any occasion. And it's not even spring specific. So keep that in mind. Obviously you could switch up the colors and make it for any time of year too. I think this would be so adorable in like reds and oranges for fall. I'll have to add that to my list. We can make it together in the fall. And yeah, I hope that you had fun with this one. I definitely did. I loved making this card with you and I hope that you enjoyed seeing some fun sneak peeks. This is one of my favorite parts about um, doing these lives is getting to know, share the newness that is coming with you all. So I will have a blog post up on the Pink and Main blog tomorrow with another sneak peek card. It is using the same Mush Love stamp set, but in a very different way. So if you want to see that, make sure that you check that out. My blog post goes up tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern. 
And yeah, I will be back on Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern with another sneak peek. It's going to be super cute. I already have so many plans. And yeah, thank you so much for coming to hang out with me. I hope that you have an amazing day tomorrow. I will see you on Thursday. And until then, happy crafting, guys.